Welcome to Ghost of a Podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Lignato. I'm an astrologer, psychic medium, and animal communicator, and I'm going to give you your weekly horoscope and no bullshit mystical advice for living your very best life. Hey loves, I have a really important question from EJ this week, and it says, I can't seem to get past this recent garbage that's been brought up with the Kavanaugh hearing and with police shootings in my hometown. I'm an assault survivor who is working towards healing, and I say active in political and social activism, but recently it feels like too much in a way that it really never has before. All the making space and taking a break and getting active doesn't seem to be doing anything. It's like a giant pool has opened up with everyone's pain, like we've all been plugged into one another and it's really too much for me. What can I do? And then EJ gives me uh, their birth date and their birth information. EJ, I'm going to look at your chart in just a minute, but I want to start off by saying I agree. It is like this pool has been opened up of everyone's pain and it is so powerful. And I'm so sorry that you're going through this. I wish that there was a simple, tidy answer to your question. There, of course, is not a simple, tidy answer to your question. I do believe that since the eclipses, we have seen a massive societal shift where the shadow side of our society has been brought to light and is increasingly being brought to light to more and more people. And as more and more of us are confronted with parts of ourselves that we have shame around, that we are not in alignment with ourselves around, so things that we've done that are out of integrity or things that we have simply not been aware of and are not in our best selves around, as more and more of us are seeing those parts of ourselves, we are also seeing that reflected in the society at large. And it's a lot. It is on a psychic level, a great deal for anyone who is energetically sensitive and also for anyone who has trauma associated with any of the myriad of themes that are really coming to surface and coming to light right now. It's a lot. And it is really important that you are, EJ, doing these things. You are taking space when you need to. You are being active politically and socially in the ways that you know how, and that you're taking breaks from media and social media. I'm really grateful to hear that you're doing these things, and I'm sorry that they're not helping. So this is my sense from your question of what it is that needs to happen. You're doing the things and you're doing the right things. So when I say you're doing the things, I don't mean to belittle those things. Keep doing those things. But what I think is happening is that your rage and anger and your sadness and grief are emotions that you've been able to manage in whatever ways possible in the past. And now you're needing better and different strategies for experiencing those emotions. Some of that is not about action, right? Some of that is not about going and doing or unplugging. It is simply about being willing and able to experience those emotions in a way that is relatively safe. And I say relatively safe because deep grief and sadness, deep anger and rage, these emotions feel quite out of control when we're feeling them. And the key here is to find ways of experiencing those emotions intentionally so that you have an outlet. Because I think that what you're telling me is that you're doing the things well, but I'm not exactly hearing an emotional self-care strategy. And that's where it's at, is knowing that these things have been brought to surface within you. And it doesn't sound like for the first time. I would say, and it sounds like you have language for that and a way of thinking about that. Now I turn to your birth chart to get a little bit more information about what you're dealing with. And geez, Louise, I mean, your chart is on fire right now. You are going through so much astrologically. Currently, Uranus is conjoined your natal Mars and square to your sun. And this reiterates the theme of anger. Your anger, your rage, your sense of feeling impotent or blocked or stuck, and your feeling of wanting to fight back and and have power in your body and in the world is being activated. And when I say activated, Uranus is always electricity. It feels just like it it really stimulates the nervous system. It feels really um, scattered and active and kind of passionate, which is great, but it is also very upsetting. And so I want to encourage you to find a way of experiencing your anger 
through your body, your frustration in your body. So to really practice staying in your body as you experience those emotions, that might look like taking really long walks. That might look like, honestly, that might look like doing archery or learning how to kickbox. It's, it's Mars is combat. And that encouraging you to do things that are dangerous or to actually like get into fights with people. But I am encouraging you to explore the boundaries of your capacity to hold power in your body and your capacity to experience anger, because that is a huge amount of what is happening with, within you and the strategies that you're using from what you've said in your question will do some of that, but only a very little bit. This is uh, kind of triggering things inside of you that are really related to rage and the desire to fight and fight back. And if you're not actively expressing that in a way that is creative, then the danger is that you turn it against yourself and you just end up fighting yourself or you're just mad at the world, but it doesn't actually change how you feel inside. Now, another thing is you have a stellium in Capricorn. And what a stellium is in astrology is it's a concentration of planets. Some astrologers will say four or more planets. Some will say three or more. Either way, you've got a stellium, you've got uh, Uranus, Saturn, Venus, and Neptune all sitting on top of each other in Capricorn. And we currently have Saturn crossing this conjunction. And this is the first time in your adult life that you've experienced this. And uh, it's a lot. It, it is a great deal. And anyone born in 1989 will be dealing with some kind of Saturn conjunctions at this time. Now, that said, what this means is Saturn governs depression. It forces us to confront reality and often the hard parts of reality. There's so many things I could say about this, but in the context of your question, you are confronting what is real and what is not real for you. You are in a place where you are needing to decide how to provide and care for yourself. And some of that is about having healthy boundaries within yourself, which is a, which is a theme that I've talked about in previous episodes. And if you haven't listened to it, go back EJ and listen to some of that stuff. This is a period that you are likely to be feeling a little depressed. Um, and you are likely to be feeling overwhelmed as you try to figure out what are the most appropriate ways for you to take care of yourself. Now, unfortunately, that is what I would expect you to be dealing with. The fact that you are here does not mean you are going to live here forever, and it does not mean that you won't find the answer. You're at where you're at because you're at where you're at. And so if you can start off by accepting, I am in the state. And the state is one where I need to figure out how to take care of what already exists instead of add a whole lot of new things in. That will help you. It's a great starting point. These transits will be over early 2019. And so you will feel a sense of relief at the start of the new year, early 2019. And so I want to encourage you to just kind of hold on for that. Now, the, the other thing that is happening is you're at the tail end of a Neptune square to the moon. And my advice about this is to know that this transit, and it's been going on for about two years, um, it does bring up a lot of anxiety. It brings up a lot of anxiety. And the work is to support your body and support your heart, your feelings around that sense of anxiety. And one way of doing that is by eating grounding foods and making sure you're taking really basic, good, solid care of your body. And another way of doing that is managing uh, what you expose yourself to. And being really responsible to that because you are likely to be more sensitive at this time. Again, I wish I had a quick fix for you. I don't. But what I do want to say is that this will pass. And if you can prioritize focusing on how you relate to your grief and your sadness, how you relate to your anger and your frustration and your rage, if you can prioritize those things, then you will be taking good care of yourself and you will be kind of shepherding yourself through this process. And that's really the best you can ask of yourself is to care for yourself through this struggle in a way that works. And when I say works, I don't mean magically fixes. I mean, just works. This will pass. And if you need to baby yourself through this period, I beg of you, please do. You've got so much Capricorn in you. And you know, remember, remember when I said you had four planets in Capricorn? I was super wrong. You're also a sun in Capricorn. You've got <laughs> you got five, you got five planets in Capricorn. So being gentle with yourself is not your forte. Uh, but that is exactly your job. 
It is to be more gentle with yourself at this time, to treat yourself with humanity. And that means knowing that you are going to be imperfect and you're going to struggle. And that's just part of being a person. And it's okay to ask for help. And it's okay to not be good at it. And it's okay to falter. Support yourself, you know, take take some days off, take some vacation days if you can. And if you can't, then set off some of your weekend as vacation days if you can. And just stay home and care for yourself or go into nature and support yourself in that way. All right, EJ, I really hope this was helpful. I hope that you can really prioritize your self-care because honestly, the worst of this will be passed uh, in the new year. So you only have a couple few more months of it, okay? And you've been going through it for so long now that you know this isn't the time to give up. It's the time to get gentle. All right, my friends, I hope that's helpful for you all and hold tight. Welcome back to your astrology corner of Ghost of a Podcast. I'm going to do a little something different for you this week, and I'm going to cast an event chart and interpret it before I get to your weekly horoscope. An event chart is pretty much what it sounds like. It's an astrological chart that is cast for an event and that gives us a sense of what will come of that event and the energy and lessons of that event. Stay tuned for the horoscope straight after that. So I want to talk to you about the chart of the event that happened this week on September 27th at 10 a.m. in Washington, D.C. for the hearing between Dr. Christine Blasey Ford and Brett Kavanaugh. The first thing that jumps out at me when I look at this chart, and I should preface this by saying if you are an astrology geek, I am using Campanus Houses as opposed to any other house system. And so that may change what you're seeing if you are also looking at this event chart. The first thing that we see is a Pluto sextile to Jupiter. And this is really powerful, this aspect to have in this chart, because it is an indicator of systemic change. We can see a shift in policy as a result of these hearings. Now, that doesn't tell us where the shift will go or what direction that shift will be in. But we do see a shift in culture that is resulting from these hearings. It is also a shift in culture that brought us to having these hearings at all. So there's kind of like how we got here and where we go from here, both reflected by this aspect in this event chart. When we look at this, it's really important to understand that there is potential for a cultural change and that potential will be realized by conversation, by sharing ideas, by sharing of stories. We're already seeing that. We saw that in the hearing and we are seeing that in the kind of resulting conversation that is occurring. Pluto can be kind of a dick. Jupiter wants the truth. And so it's important that we pursue the truth with our humanity intact, which means with empathy and with patience that every person is an individual and has their own individual experience and also the, tr the truth exists. The truth is true. And we should be pursuing truth. Now, the other thing that is really standing out to me when I look at this chart is this grand cross. And it's a grand cross between Venus in Scorpio, opposite a moon Uranus conjunction in Taurus. And all of those three planets are forming squares to the North Node in Leo in the ninth house, which is the house of policy and Mars in Aquarius, in the third house, which is the house of our um, ideas and attitudes. And Venus and Mars are both gender related planets, right? You know, Mars is a little man symbol and Venus is a little lady symbol. And so we see this reiteration of the theme of conflicts between gender and conflicts between which gender gets valued and how we express that value and the policy the, you know, governmental policy that is uh, in charge of reflecting our value in society and our essential safety in society. This big aspect in this chart expresses the tension that we see brought to the surface at this time. So the tension that we're seeing in this, in this hearing and in the resulting conversations, um, it is really specific to what's happening in this situation, but it's not new. This is not new. This is, first of all, you know, the hearing is about something that happened many years ago, but it is coming to the surface now and it's coming to the surface now so that we can deal with the tensions around sexual safety, different people's value within society and why survivors don't come forward with their stories because it isn't safe. When we look at the house placements of all the planets in this Grand Cross, we see the pursuit of truth right? We see this theme of a pursuit of truth. And what's important to remember about this hearing is that 
we are seeing the pursuit of truth in a very specific event between these two people. But we're also seeing it in response to a man, Mr. Brett Kavanaugh, looking for a job. That's an important part of this because the Uranus moon conjunction is in the sixth house. It's where we find a job. Okay, it's where we find our jobs. And so part of what's really important in this is we're not just looking at a he said, she said situation, which I think is a little bit possible for an astrologer to look at this chart and be like, oh, this is a he said, she said thing. No, 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 no. It's not that simple. This man is looking for a job and it's a lifetime appointment and he will have a moralistic authority over the rule of law in the whole United States of America. That's kind of a big job, guys kind of a big job. And what we're looking at is if there is any shadow of a doubt of his morality, of his ability to value all humans as equal, then he doesn't deserve this job. That seems like it's a pretty pretty basic thing. Um, but what we are seeing is that it is actually not basic for lots of people. And this situation with, with Dr. Ford is not creating that it is reflecting that it is bringing it to the surface. And that is a theme that we're seeing over and over again in the astrology of the past couple few years. And we are going to continue to see that over the next couple few years. Now, having that North Node in the ninth house, it does indicate the potential, as I said, for policy change. But because Uranus is involved in this, we see an unpredictable element here, okay? And this is, it's unclear to say what the change will be. We're already seeing in the hearing itself, this unpredictable thing where we have this woman who is recounting details to the whole country about an assault that happened to her. And she's doing it with grace and, and self-possession. And then we see the men, you know, Brett Kavanaugh and other male senators being really emotional and screaming and crying and whining. My goodness, the whining. There was a lot of emotion and it was uncorked and it was messy. And that's the thing what, that Uranus can do. It can just uncork messy emotion in a way where it's hard to contain it. And, and we really did see that with the men in the room fascinating. Not all the men, but a bunch of them, a bunch of them. So that's not all. There's more to say about this chart. We have Chiron uh, in the fifth house and it is forming a square to Saturn in the second. And this is a really powerful aspect to have in this particular chart. I mean, it is a powerful aspect in general. What this indicates is the potential here for healing sexual wounds from men. And when I say from men, yes, I do mean from actual human males. But it's also, of course, really about the systemic power of men and the systemic themes of male dominance is what sex is between women and men. And we are seeing right now this this really intense spotlight on something that is very old, which is men's entitlement on a systemic level to take sex as theirs and to uh, create laws to protect their right to take sex as theirs. And I got to say, as a female, not a fan of this theme, not at all. And hopefully for the men listening, you're not a fan either because it's some bullshit. So I want to say to you here, the, the reiterations that we are seeing are the systemically upheld ways in which we have agreed that men get to have dominance over women. And this is a time for change. This is a time where it's getting challenged. But the way that it's getting challenged is having it come to the surface. And whenever we're dealing with Chiron, we're dealing with psychic wounds. And so there are millions of people who are dealing with their own individual wounds and their own individual terror. And it's, again, coming to the surface and people are looking around and they're like, am I safe in the structure of this world? Does this world support my needs and my safety? And, you know, the answer is not yes for everybody. That's real. This is a time where we are meant to really confront that and make choices as a society, also as individuals, of course, but as a society in the context of this chart about what we're going to do about that, how we are going to protect survivors and how we are going to have more balanced power between genders and between peoples. I'm not done guys. I got to, I got to add another little something here, which is that this chart also has a sun Mercury conjunction and it is square to Saturn. And this means that we are 
all talking about it. We are all thinking about it, that there were a lot of ideas that were clearly stated, systemically clearly stated in the hearing itself. And that this hearing is going to provoke conversation for a long time to come. This is going to be well documented because of Saturn's uh, placement. I mean, you didn't need astrology to tell you that it was going to be well documented. It's 2018. However, the chart is saying it. And the chart is saying that it is fostering very difficult conversations. There is so much potential for change, for systemic change. And what we don't see from this chart is which way that change will go. And the astrology moving forward in the next couple of years, in addition to the astrology of this chart, indicates the potential for major, major change uh, in society and upheaval in society. What my hope is, is that we use this information to actively engage in being a part of that change and having our voices heard so that our values and our needs are reflected in that change. So be a part of the change you want to see in society and, you know, take good care of yourselves. You can unplug from social media and the news whenever you need to. And also stay informed, find a balance, friends, find that balance. And now for your horoscope. We are going to be looking at September 30th through October 6, 2018. This week's horoscope has a lot. It has a lot. On the 30th, Pluto, the planet of transformation and destruction and creation, the planet that governs power and resentment and abandonment and trauma and, yes, abuse of all kinds, sexual abuse and other kinds, including substance abuse. Pluto is a heavy hitter. It has positive sides to it as well, but it is the under belly of society. It is the things inside of your psyche that you have judgments around, that you think are bad, that you have shame around. Because Pluto governs shame and abandonment and terror and all these kinds of really heavy emotions that humans tend to repress and push away, it can really lead humans to making terrible choices and doing terrible acts, not always out of evil, sometimes out of fear or out of other complicated, messed up impulses. Where we have Pluto, we do have trauma. And this has been a period this past week where a lot of people's trauma, especially women's trauma, has been brought to surface. And there's just been trigger after trigger after trigger for people who have survived sexual assault. For women, I would say that most women, even if they have not experienced sexual assault, have experienced sexual harassment and the fear of sexual assault. Um, It's kind of how we raise girls, isn't it? Talking about how to not get assaulted. And this big, intense planet is in the sign of Capricorn. And Capricorn is hierarchy and society and maleness, not male in a like boy girl gender way, but maleness as a like paternal patriarchal energy. This planet has been moving retrograde. It's been moving backwards, appearing to move backwards through the sky. And on the 30th, it goes direct. And so we have been in this, uh, kind of like stationary time this past week, we have been seeing a shift in the society. And it's also a shift for you personally. On a societal level, we are going to see massive shifts in power. Now, before you throw a party or hide under the bed, it's not necessarily good or bad. It's powerful. And whenever we're dealing with Pluto, it's going to be powerfully creative or powerfully destructive. That's just kind of how Pluto rolls. And so It is really, really important if you don't like the way things are going in society, in the government, in your family structure, in your workplace, in your own relationship to yourself or some habit, this is the time to restructure and to be willing to go into deep and powerful change. Pluto governs the kind of things that we change that change everything. So we're looking at some really profound themes. As Pluto moves forward, we are going to see a shifting of guards. Now, that doesn't mean there will be an actual change in power, there might be. It really, and this is where, you know, I always come back to astrology has a lot to do with free will because things can go in a number of directions. We as individuals make up the whole. Each of us as individuals make up the whole. And if you are willing to participate and you are willing to do your part, you don't have to do all the parts. You don't have to do anyone's part, but you just do a part. 
then change happens. And it's really important as I say this to acknowledge that you might not know what your part is. Your part might be changing, but there is something to do. When we're dealing with Pluto in the world and in our lives, if there's something that comes up that feels inevitable, like this crushing, pushing inevitability. Pluto is kind of like the undertow of the ocean. It drags you down. And if you try to fight it, you're toast. It doesn't work because it is more powerful than you. And so instead, what we are meant to do is to accept that it's happening. And when we accept that it's happening, we can start making choices. In the case of undertow, it's let go. It's let go and let yourself organically shift to safety. In the context of being traumatized by the news, maybe then the action is you take a break or you limit your consumption so that you can actually make use of what you're learning instead of being crushed by it. But you know, self-care should not be something that we do in such a way that we essentially are sticking our head in the sand. That's not self-care exactly. So for you, your your you know, your balance point might be different than me or your friends and your balance might be different in September than it was in August. That's cool, but find it. Seek it. Seek it. Even if you don't find it, keep on seeking it. That's the key here. As Pluto moves direct, it is important for me to remind you guys or let you guys know that its energies act like a boomerang. What you put out into the world will come back at you. I would like to tell you that life is symmetrical, but it would make me kind of a liar or someone who didn't look around. Life is not symmetrical. We can't wait for bad things to happen when people do us wrong. We are meant to find our own peace. We are meant to find our own peace. And in the case of systemic societal issues, we are meant to be an active agent of peace. Because if we all turn away and say, it's not my job, then who the hell's going to do it? Can you trust that person? Is that really what you want to do? I'm going to say to you, my friends, don't do that. Because the astrology of 2018, lo, the astrology of 2019, (laughs) and even 2020 implores you to be actively engaged and involved. Is that all? Of course it's not. On October 5th through November 16th, we have a Venus retrograde. Now you've heard me talk about Mercury retrograde, right? This is something that most, most people know about these days. Venus retrograde is quite different. Venus in astrology governs your love life, right? And it's like the little woman symbol. So it also governs women, the gender of women. You know, honestly, as an astrologer, I kind of don't love uh, Venus as female and Mars as male. And I can get into that in another episode, why? But I will say that um, conventionally, that is how astrologers look at the planet Venus. And massive shifts are happening in women's rights and women's voice and women validating other women. This is a big shift. And what happens during a Venus retrograde is we have less flow in our external lives because we're meant to look internally at our relationship to ourselves in our relationship to our love lives, um, in our relationship to gender in general, what, regardless of whether you know you identify as male, female, GNC, anything in between, this is a time to really reflect on that. It's also, interestingly, Venus is also about money and it's about your finances. And so we're going to unpack this in future episodes and future horoscopes because we've got a little bit of time with this Venus retrograde. But ultimately, what Venus is about is value. It is about what you value who you value, and how you actively place value on those things. And you can see this if you look around society, there is a shifting tide around values. And I encourage you to, again, be a part of the larger conversation that's happening. I also encourage you in terms of your own personal life, don't be in such a rush to find the answer that you don't contemplate the question. What I'm trying to say here is retrogrades are a time to review, reassess, reconsider. They're a time to look within and they're not a time to have all the answers. There's nothing wrong with realizing you don't have the answers. In fact, it's a, it's a, it's a mark of maturity in my view. It's really important to be willing and able to ask questions and to sit with the not knowing. This is, again, in relationship to what and who you value and how you articulate those values. As time progresses, I was, you know, the next month or so progresses, we are going to see more things that challenge our ideas about other people, our relationship to money, our relationships in general, as well as our value systems overall. It's important 
to be authentic. It is important to be whole. That's it. You may find that this is a time where you get to really question things and come up with new answers and start to unpack a plan, right? Because first we have this Pluto moving direct in Capricorn. Also, we have this Venus retrograde and a bunch of other things supporting this year's strategy I'm giving you. Come up with a plan. You don't have to be there now in order to make the decision that you're going to get there. You don't need to have it all figured out or have all of the answers now in order to earnestly investigate what it is that you want to be or do or how you can participate in a way that is true to you. Do the work. Investigate. Now, there's one other transit happening uh, this week, and it's right in between these two big shifts that I mentioned. On the second and right around the second, you'll feel it for a couple few days, we have a Mercury square to Pluto happening just in time for the Cancer moon. And this is kind of of an intense uh, transit. Mercury is your ideas. It's your attitudes. It's what you think, what you say. It's emails and texts. It's the news. Pluto, as as I kind of unpacked for you, is intense. And so when these two planets form a challenging aspect, as they are going to do, what we tend to find is that we feel obsessive and paranoid and freaked out. I mean, watch the news, y'all says, watch the news around that day and do it in a way that you can emotionally sustain because the moon is going to be in cancer, which is just likely to make us a little bit extra reactive. This transit makes us want to get to the, the bottom of things. The problem is it doesn't make us terribly objective. It tends to make us severely subjective and a little bit neurotic and compulsive. It's a terrible time to cyberstalk people. Don't cyberstalk people. That's a terrible idea. It's a terrible time to indulge your compulsions. If you're going to go out drinking or partying around these this date, uh, it's not a great idea. So really try to be as moderate as possible. The thing about this transit is it intensifies your thinking. And so if you can exercise some level of balance or self-control around what you allow yourself to focus on so that your thinking goes in creative and generative direction instead of a destructive and kind of making things worse style of direction, then you're going to be making the best use of this transit. It is unwise to lie around the state because it will probably bite you in the ass later. It is unwise to be cruel or to be vindictive towards people around the state because, again, it will bite you in the ass later. What is this a great date to do is to look at the ways in which you hold resentments and how it hurts, to try to be interested in the workings of your own mind and the workings of your own attitudes and judgments because you can really do deep work around transforming them. Now, unfortunately, because Pluto does govern trauma, you may find yourself dealing with somebody who's really triggering some sort of trauma or being actually traumatic to you, chances are more likely that it'll just be like a trigger, which is a very different thing than a trauma. Or it might be that you obsessively think about something that you know is just terrible for you. Here's the thing. If you catch yourself doing that around these dates or in general ever, a good thing to do is to A, notice it, B, try to be interested in it, and C, keep on being interested in it. Instead of buying into the story, be interested in what the story is, where it's coming from. You know, when you find yourself obsessing on the details of what someone else thought or meant or did or might do, you have lost your way. That is not your business. Even if you are a fantastic psychic, you probably just don't know and can't know. Even if you know the answers, you have to go through the process. So be here for the process and try to have as healthy and balanced of an approach to the process as you can muster here and now. All right, my loves, it's kind of an intense moment, uh, kind of an intense horoscope, but also this is a time for growth. It's a time for healing and for change. You absolutely can do it. Look at who you value. Look at how you value yourself. Hold things in proportion to their value. It only matters so much how you look or what happened in that one little interaction. It matters so much that you interact with people in a way that reflects your integrity. Hold the authenticity of your behavior in higher regard to whether or not you had food in your teeth when you smiled at someone. Because it really doesn't matter, the food in your teeth. I mean, it's super hella crazy matters. Yes, it does. Slash, it doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter. This is a really powerful time for transforming your relationship to value. So think about it. Talk about it with your friends. Talk about it with your dear diary. I love you. I'll talk to you next week. Bye. Every year they say the end is near, but we're still here. Yeah, we're still here. The podcast you just heard was published with Anchor. Got something you want to say to the creator of this show? Send them a voice message using the Anchor app, free for iOS and Android.